For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love of God is Jesus Christ. Man's problems, but the Bible calls sin, originated in a garden where there were fruits and vegetables, a glorious garden that God had made on this planet called Earth. And in that garden, he put two people, a man and a woman, a male and a female, Adam and Eve. And God gave strict instructions unto the man. Thou mayest eat of any of the fruits of the garden, but of the tree, the fruit of the tree of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. And man in his rebellion ate of that fruit. And by rebelling against the word of God, sin came. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And men will die because they are sinners. And men became sinners by rebelling against the word of God. And we stand here in 2018 at a farmer's market with all kinds of fruits and vegetables. And God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And in rebellion is you're not listening to God. God told Adam not to take of that fruit and he took of it. And God tells you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved and you won't do it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you can turn up the music, but they can hear it over here. And they can hear that Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. For there's one God. And that God Almighty has sent to us the remedy of our curse called sin. Sin is as a cancer. And the only way to get rid of the sin curse cancer is by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, a lamb without spot. The lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You see, religion cannot remove sin. Religion only adds to sin. When you think that you can do something to please God, you have added sin unto sin because the Bible says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man the Father, but by me. So when Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, you can minus your religion. For religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. No, I'm going by the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you want to be in the eternal life on the good side, that good side is by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It cannot be by your goodness, for the Bible says there is none that doeth good, no, not one. For all have sinned, for all have come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You cannot stand before God at the judgment say and say, God, look at me. Look how good I am. Because when God 
looks at you, and in your goodness, he's going to present his son, Jesus Christ, in righteousness. And when Jesus Christ the righteousness, he will outdo your good and cast you off into hell and burn forever because you have not believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Jesus also said besides the fact that he is the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes unto the Father but by me, he also says to you that will reject him, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And you may be in your religion, you may be in your science, you may be in your agnosticism, you may be in your atheism, but the Bible also says, prepare to meet thy God. And when the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God, thy God is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that is the God you're to put your faith and trust in. For there is no other. There is no Romanism. There is no baptism. There is no safeness in religion but by Jesus Christ, who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. That is the belief. There is no mass in the Bible. There is no killing of people for righteousness in the Bible. There is no giving money to be saved in the Bible. There is no other way in the Bible but by the one that said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me and girls will not have fun in hell burning forever enjoy the music for once you die without Christ you will enter into a dark in eternity with no hope no God, no friends, and no light forever. Because you have chosen to reject Jesus Christ. God's offering. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, God's gift, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that gift is free. Now, many of you are going to open up your bills this month, and you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a heart attack because you're going to see the bills from the gifts that you bought people. And you're not going to be able to pay that debt. You haven't paid off the debt two Christmases ago. And yet Jesus Christ suffered and died freely for our sins to be paid, to be righteous sought by God, and God's righteousness is in Jesus Christ. Today you can be saved. Today you can call upon God through Jesus Christ through the faith of your heart and have your name written down in the last book of life. And when you die, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And yet if you die without Christ, you will die, they will bury you, and you will wake up in hell, burning in torments. You cannot get to heaven by your righteousness. You cannot get to heaven by your religion. You cannot get to heaven by thinking there is no heaven. The Bible by God says there is a heaven, there is a hell. And God says in His Holy Bible, you are not going to heaven without Jesus Christ. You cannot stand up to God and say, hey, look at me, I'm a Baptist. That doesn't work. You can't go up to God and say, hey, look, I'm an American. That don't work. There are no Americans in heaven. There are Christians that are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. The only entrance into heaven is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Look at yourself right now. You may die today. You are unsure when death will come knock at your door. I don't care what age you are. I don't care what sex you are. 
death is coming to you for the wages of sin is death. And before you die, the time that you do not know when, if you have not believed on Jesus Christ, you will enter off into hell. If you have and or will right now or maybe tomorrow, you're not sure, but if you were to believe on Jesus Christ with your heart, you will enter into heaven only by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and arose again the three days and three nights according to the scriptures. There is no scriptures for your religion. There is no scriptures for your work. The chastisement, the punishment, the abusement, the whippings, the nails, the thorns, the blood of Jesus Christ, the brutality of Jesus Christ was because we are sinners. Christ was a bloody massive goo when they finished with him. They used cat of nine, they used uh, nails, they used thorns, they used their fists. God beat the daylights out of Jesus Christ in order that I may be set free. God put his punishment upon Jesus Christ that I may be free. God placed upon Jesus the judgment of sin that you may be free. When Jesus Christ suffered that night and suffered upon the cross, he suffered for you. He suffered and died for you. He took your place. He paid the penalty of sin and became a improvement to God that you may come to him to be saved, that you may not die in your sins. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There's no other way for you to get rid of your sin, and you've got a sin condition. It came when you were born. It's a cancer that was when you were born, you were born in your sins, and you were born to die, and without Jesus, you will suffer him. Everybody wants to go to heaven. If I were asked, 95% of the people will say, yes, I'm going to heaven, but... Without Jesus Christ, you are going nowhere but straight down. See, without God, without Jesus Christ, you go down, down. You fall down. They bury you in the ground. And then you go down deep into hell. But in order to get up in this world, in order to get high, in order to go where beyond the eagles fly, in order to get to God's abode, you've got to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. And it's simple. Just put your faith and trust in your sins on Jesus. There's no other. You work around the island. Life begins at Calvary, folks. When you come to Jesus Christ as a sinner, when you come repentant of your heart, and you put your faith and trust in Him, that's when life begins. There is no life in anything else. Life is not at 50. Life is not even really at the consentment of, of the womb. Because once you're born, you're born to die. And you will enter into one or two places in eternity. The Bible speaks of an afterlife, death. The Bible speaks about being born. The Bible speaks about living. The Bible speaks about death. The Bible speaks about a life after death, and that's heaven or hell. There's no other place. There is no limbo. There is no paradise. There is no purgatory. There is only heaven or hell. And I'm here to tell you to get to heavens by Jesus Christ, your faith and trust in the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And the penalty of disobeying God is hell. 
God is a righteous, holy God. He says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And as a sinner, you are not holy. So you cannot stand in the presence of a holy God without Jesus Christ's righteousness. There's no way. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. We are all born of God through Adam. We are Adam's children. And there's nothing we can do to please God of our sins. Incense will not do it. Money cannot do it. Credit won't do it. Imagine using credit to get rid of your sins and you go bankrupt. And if you use credit and you don't pay for it, then it ain't done. And yet the greatest charge card we have for our sins is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's been paid already for you. Your sin debt has been paid already and all you've got to do is come and sign. It'd be like me going to the bank and putting a million dollars in your name. I say go to this bank and in the bank in your name is a million dollars. All you got to do is go sign the papers. And you would run to the bank to get that million dollars. And the Bible and God and Jesus Christ says all you got to do is come to the Son and believe and repent of your sin and get right. Run to the heavenly bank of heaven where Jesus Christ is the depositor. And he deposits the payment for our sins. And once you put your sins and your faith and your heart in Jesus, those sins will never come back. They've been canceled. They've been forgiven. They've been gone. They've been wiped away. They've been erased. If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. There is no assurance in your church. Your priest, your pastor, your rabbi, whoever you follow cannot say your sins are resolved by what they do. Your sins are only canceled by Jesus Christ and the gospel that he suffered and died for your sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. See, I didn't mention church attendance. I didn't mention money. I didn't mention what good we can do. I mentioned the gospel of Jesus Christ, the righteous. Jesus Christ, the, the payment for sin. The only one that can cancel our sin. You see, you will stand before God without Jesus Christ as a thief. You will stand as a liar. You will stand as a sinner for all have sinned. There is nobody that, sin, that nobody that has never sinned. And when you die, that will prove you're a sinner. For the wages of sin is death. You will die because you are the sinner that Jesus Christ suffered and died for. But once you die, it's too late. You cannot return and undo what you didn't do. That's how sure death is. On the other hand, if you got saved and you died and went to glory, you cannot come back and say, oh, let me go do the wonderful things that you wanted me to do. You see, my pastor never talked about rewards. I had no idea. I never read my Bible. 
And I never realized that that loud mouth preacher is going to get a crown for preaching the gospel. Oh, Lord God, let me go back down and let me improve my life. That's not going to happen either. But I'm not going to preach about heaven here because the Bible already says many will go the broad way. I'm in a place called Daytona Beach, Florida. I am looking at a farmer's market, and I've got a guy over here trying to, to blot out the gospel with music. I got people who do not want to hear it. I got people here who would rather have me go home and stay warm with my family. There's people here wishing to shut up. Oh, he's going to be going in 45 minutes. I know you're not saved. I know you don't love God. But the Bible says, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. You're the world. And I'm preaching the gospel. I want you to know that you can be saved. I want you to know that if you were to die, where your eternity would be. And I'm here to tell you, without Jesus Christ, your eternity is hell. You think hell is now? Wait till you die and find out what hell is. You feel this breeze? Isn't it nice? There's no breeze in hell. There's no fruits and vegetables in hell. There is no music in hell. Enjoy it. There is no love in hell. There is no grace in hell. There is no mercy in hell. But in heaven, by Jesus Christ, the Bible proclaims a new body. How's your old body doing today? How does it feel? And yet the Bible says those who believe on Jesus Christ will get a new body that will never sin again. A body that will never decay, break down, get old for all eternity. You'll have a body that will have no more pain, no more suffering. And the Bible even says in Revelation 22, no more tears. Upon Jesus Christ, the salvation thereof in glory, there's no more anxiety. There's no more torture. There's no more tribulation once we get to heaven. But that is by only Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, there's torments, there's hell, there's the lake of fire for not believing on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, but no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Don't go up to God and expect your baptism to work. It will not. Do not go up to God and say, I'm Catholic. That won't work. The angels in heaven will say, what's a Catholic? Don't go up to God and say, hey, I've given to charities. That don't work. The greatest charity is the love of God, Jesus Christ. And there's no going to God with any other good thing. Then there are good things. But what does, what does the Bible say? It says there's none that do it good. No, not one. So if you were to walk up to me and say, hey, I'm a good person, by whose standard? What standard are you good? According to the Bible, you're no good. You realize every character in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ had a flaw? Women, you would not want to have been married to Abraham. Children, you would not want to have Rebecca and Isaac as your parents. You would not want Jacob in charge of your sales team. You would not want Joshua in charge of your prayer meeting. 
every man in the Bible outside Jesus Christ are flawed. You're flawed. It's called sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of death is sin. Because you are a sinner, you will die. And before you die, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again. And if you're not, you will wake up in hell. And there's no coming out. And it's for eternal life. There's no coming out once you enter those doors. No matter how much pleading you will do, you will be in hell for all eternity. And yet, if you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you will have an eternity of righteousness, of goodness, of newness. And you mock and rebel and turn against God today, one day you will be sorry. One day you will realize that my words are not my words, but they are the words of the Bible. That the love of God is that he sent feet to preach the word. And with the heart, man believes on the righteousness. With the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. And when your mouth turns against what God has, has said, what God's message is, what the gospel is, you're not saved. See, the love of God is He sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins. The love of God is He sent preachers. The love of God is sending the love of God, the charity of God is Jesus Christ and hell fire preaching, if you want to call it that. And you say, preacher, you, all you do is hell, 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 hell. And that's where you're going without Jesus. I am giving you directions when you don't even know where you're going. The gospel can't be found on a GPS. The gospel's got to be found in a King James 6011 Bible. And it can only be found by Jesus. And without Jesus, you are lost. And you got to make sure you have the biblical Jesus. Because Paul speaks about another Jesus. There's a Jesus that's not God. There's a Jesus that can be eaten. There's a, oh, sweet Jesus, holy Jesus. They are not the biblical Jesus that was virgin born of the tribe of Judah, who is God, that is seated at the right hand of God, that suffered and died according to the scriptures, that was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, that better be your Jesus. Amen. Yes. You have a good day, man. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? And then you get the opposition to Satan. It's no good. You guys have a good day. Stay warm. There is no other. There is no other option. You see, men have option A, option B, plan one, plan two. If you don't like this one, you can do this one. I just had a life insurance policy I mailed. He said, you got this one. But if you want this, check this box and you can get it. And if you want a better one, you can check this third box. Well, listen, the box that I checked to get eternal life and got right is the box that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the best. That is the only means to get to heaven. For Jesus again said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's repetition for four years. 
You keep hearing hell, hell, hell. Jesus, 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 death, death, death. That verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. You keep saying, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You keep saying, the wages of sin is death. You keep preaching out of that Bible. You keep preaching about God. I'm going to keep preaching until you believe on Jesus and be saved. I'm going to keep preaching until you die and have rejected the gospel and find out that the preaching is right. There have been people here, I guarantee, within four years that has been at this farmer's market. And they have long since died or recently died. And there are two accounts of those people. The ones that are in heaven by Jesus, thank God for that preacher. Man, he was right. And those who have rejected Jesus, they are in a place called hell and say, Oh, preacher, preach to those people, preach to my family, tell them about this wicked place that they may not come. Luke 16. And it never surprises me what you try to do to prevent the gospel because the Bible says you are already going to be markers and scorners and rebellious. I already knew it. I studied the Bible myself. I know that many of you are going to go to Broadway and enter into hell. I know that. And I know few of you will go to the straight gate and get eternal life. And for the few, I come and hope and pray that you be one of the few. I don't know. But the many that go the broad way, I come. Because God says preach the gospel, but not only that. See, if I came just because God said preach the gospel, I'd be here with no love. I want you to know about eternal life. I want you to know about Jesus Christ. I want you to do right. I don't want you to suffer. Now the love of God is he sent his only begotten son. The love of God is he sent the gospel. My love is that I want you not to go to hell. I want you to know what God has said. Because I would be foolish and absolutely stupid to think that you're going to get this message Sunday morning in the church. I would be absolutely stupid to think you would get the blood gospel of Jesus Christ. I would be absolutely out of my mind if I were to think that you would hell that you would hear hell out of the pulpit tomorrow morning. You may that be the few. But the many of the churches will give you a nice, comfortable message and pass the plate. We have no plate. What we have is the gospel. And the gospel is the only means of salvation. It is that of what God has remedied your sin condition. You see, I told you, the wages of sin is death. You're going to die. You have a cancer. And God has the prescription. It is His Son, Jesus Christ, upon that cross, out of the empty tomb. Your cure for your cancer called death and sin is not chemotherapy, it's the gospel. You must take that prescription by God which we've been preaching. That prescription is called the death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures of Jesus Christ. you got to take that prescription to Jesus and say, Jesus, i got a prescription by God. It's called the gospel. I want it filled. 
And when you come to Jesus Christ as a sinner with your heart, with faith, that prescription could be filled for eternal life. Now you'll still be a sinner, but you'll be a sinner washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You'll be made a child of God by that prescription. Now remember, the wages of sin is death. We're all sinners. But the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. So we are sinners. And the Lamb, Jesus Christ, is the only one that can take that sin away. He never says religion of God take away the sin away. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say being a good person take away the sin of the world. And by golly, he is definitely not going to say Baptists take away the sin of the world. No, the Bible says the Lamb of God, so there's got to be other lambs out there, the Lamb, capital L, of God take away the sin of the world. The wages of sin is death, And that sin can be taken away by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. See, the message is the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Even though we are condemned even though we are in damnation as sinners, there is a gift of God that's eternal life. And that eternal life is the land that take away the sin of the world. And that lamb, according to Revelation, is Jesus Christ. But again, Paul says, be warned that there's other Jesuses out there. you got to make sure your faith and trust is in the Bible, Jesus. There are plenty others out there. But rest for the fact is the wages of sin, you're going to die. It may be today. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will go off into hell. And if you die with Christ, you will go off into eternity in heaven, New Jerusalem, where there's a new body, there's peace, there's love, there's joy, there's long-suffering. That's better than hell. 